of God for they can never fail. Good morning, church. Good morning. Praise the name of the Lord. We welcome you to our morning worship in our Kenyan morning prayer order of service. And we have come together, the people of God, drawn by his spirit and longing for his word, to praise the holy name of the Lord, to share his glorious news of grace, to pray for our needs and the pain of the world, to rejoice in his love, and be sent in his peace. We are heirs of the Father. Join to us with the Son. Renewed in the Spirit. Together we are one. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins in repentance and trust, God is so faithful and just, and he'll forgive us our sins. So I invite all of us to get seated as we confess our sins to our Father in heaven. Eternal Father, Father, God of our ancestors, before your power all things tremble, but through your Son we approach your throne. We have done wrong and neglected to do right. Our sins we have in our hearts. Lord of mercy, come turn on against us. Grant us the joy of forgiveness. Enlighten our hearts to the glory of Christ, who died and rose again for us. Amen. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ rejoices at repentance and declares his acceptance. The dead are alive and the lost are found. His goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life, and you will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are those who live in your house. They'll be always singing your praise. Praise the Lord. The name of the Lord be praised. Glory to the Father in whom all things began. Glory to the Son who became the Son of Man. 
Glory to the Spirit who is Father and news. Lord our God forever. Hallelujah. How will let eyes get with that thing in my heart? How will let eyes fall with praise? How we save in the day that the Lord has been? How we rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. How we rejoice for He has made me glad. How we let eyes get with that giving in my heart? How we let eyes call to praise? How we save in the day that the Lord has made? How we rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. How we rejoice for He has made me glad. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Just for before him, heaven and all that go in. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels for before him, heaven and all that go in. What a mighty God we serve. Let us be seated. Our reading today. Uh, which is also the theme of this month, is from the book of Psalms, chapter 133. Psalms, chapter 133. We will start from verse 1 to the end. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down to the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down to the corner of his robes. It is as if the dew of Hammon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessings, even life forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as, as it, it was, was in the, the beginning, beginning, is now, now and, and ever, ever shall, shall be. be. Without end. Amen. We Amen. rise up as he face the cross of Jesus Christ, as he affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. earth. I, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of our lasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray as we sit. Can it shall be given unto you? Seek it, you shall find. Ah, no, can the door shall be opened unto you? Savior's taught us, so we boldly pray. Our Father in heaven, holy, holy be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins, as, as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide our president. And give him your wisdom and justice. May your minister serve you faithfully. And your royal people joyfully. In the valley of the shadow of death. Protect us with your rod and staff. Like trees planted by the waterside. Grant us the fruit of your spirit. Send us out as a salt of the earth. And as a light of the world. May the earth be filled with your glory. As the waters cover the sea. We are going to pray the prayer for the day together. Almighty, Almighty Father, Father, holy and revered, revered grant that our life shall manifest faith, holiness, reverence for God and humility, and to put the needs of others before our own, and thus lay ourselves treasures in heaven, indestructible and, and eternal, eternal, through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. We are going to pray the cathedral prayer again together. O Lord, o Lord Jesus Christ, Christ cornerstone of your holy church, church giver of every good gift, look down upon us, your people, who desire to build a sanctuary to your glory. Grant us wisdom, strength, and resources to accomplish this task in accordance to your will. Inflame our hearts with love for you, that we may offer to you ourselves and all that you have given us to the glory of your name. Amen. We shall have a moment of praise and worshiping the Lord together as we rise up on our feet and as I invite the praise team to lead us in the same. Hallelujah, my coffee and two. Hallelujah. Oh, hey, hey, my God is good. Oh, hey, hey, my God is good. Oh,
indeed you are the beginning and the end this morning lord we lift our voices to thank you and praise your holy name because you are god thank you father because you have been our god and you are our god this morning lord we have witnessed your goodness and love upon each one of us oh god that you've given us an opportunity to come before you and you walk with us this week oh lord father we thank you because of your goodness upon each one of us we acknowledge that it is by power your power and might that has taken us through the week father we have gone for journeys you have watched over us you have provided for us you have taken care of our lives you have shielded us oh lord and you have healed our diseases this morning we lift your name on high and say you are god and indeed you are our alpha and omega father we thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness upon us oh jehovah even as we go through this month of april lord we thank you because you have walked into this month with us and lord we are trusting you even for this month and for everything that we are encountering this month because lord you are our alpha and you are our omega today oh god father we thank you for your faithfulness upon this country oh god jehovah god you have blessed us with rain and we lift your voices to thank you for your faithfulness and goodness upon us oh god and this morning we pray that the lord that the rain that you give us shall bring forth fruit and your people shall have food and plenty oh god in the name of jesus lord we thank you for the president and all the leaders of our nation and this morning we thank you even for the leaders of our county governments oh god and we pray the lord jehovah as they continue to do the mandate that you you have given them they may do it in fear of you oh god that you may grant them wisdom oh god and we, that they may be able to make decisions that are good for a people of this nation father we thank you because you continue to amaze us with your love and what you continue to do in the church of christ and we thank Thank you because of what you are doing even amidst us oh god almighty jehovah god we have seen you oh god we have seen you lead us from the beginning of the year to this month how awesome is your name this morning oh god we pray for our church oh god this morning we thank you for the diocese of mount kenya king of glory we thank you for our bishop this morning oh god and his family as he continues to steer this uh, diocese oh god we pray that you may continue to bless him and to guide him we thank you lord for the leadership of this cathedral O king of glory we pray for the provost and all the leaders oh jehovah father remembering each one of us this morning oh god father we pray that you may remember us and that you may do us good oh jehovah god thank you for the gift of family this morning jehovah god we pray that you may continue to increase us in our families oh god and that you may continue to bind us with love cords of love that cannot be broken oh jehovah father Thank you for giving us the gift of children. Thank you for giving us the gift of mothers, oh Lord. Thank you for giving us the gift of husbands for brothers and sisters, oh God. Father, we thank you for the gift of parents this morning. And we pray that you may keep us in harmony and love in our homes, oh Jehovah Father, in the name of Jesus. Dear Lord, this morning, as we gather in this sanctuary, oh God, we pray that you may continue to increase us in faith, oh Jehovah, as we continue to witness your goodness and love upon us oh god oh god we have seen you oh lord we have touched you and we have witnessed you in this place oh god and this morning we continue to thank you for the great cathedral that continues to be built and we are continuing to trust in you for resources for what is remaining oh god and father jehovah god the commitment we have made before you we are trusting you the lord almighty that it shall come to pass in the name of jesus for the glory and honor of your holy name speak to us and continue to strengthen us in our faith oh god and in all our endeavors as we go out and as we come in we are trusting you to walk with us and this is our humble prayer of faith in jesus name let us celebrate the lord as we invite the choir
Lest we forget Gethsemane, let's never forget the love of God that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for us at the cross of Christ. We welcome many other talents that are seated on the pews that would be joined, that would come together to form a great choir. We continue to welcome you that we join the choir and continue to sing to the Most High God. Good morning, church. We welcome you in the name of Jesus. Mary Mungai amewasalimia akopale nyuma. Mary inua mkono mahali yuko. Amen. We welcome you to St. James Cathedral. Being, uh, or being here as a visitor, all one of us, we feel honored to worship together in the presence of the Almighty. Our people is as indicated uh, on the 
at the tents. We can see the pay bill number 593225. Uh, write the name of what you are paying as your account. That is a pay bill and the account is what you are offering. We welcome the church that is online and the people following us that as we continue to worship the Lord together. Today we are being ushered by Bethel to Apigia Makofi. They are so smart. They are so, so, so smart. Next Sunday, the ushering will be done by Belaya Cell Group. Kanisa Mandukani continues, began, began at 7, and uh, at 9, we are at Ola Petro Station, and we thank God. We want to remind you of our morning prayers and devotion on Wednesday, beginning from 6.30 a.m., and we shall be live on Facebook. The 1 p.m. Holy Communion service will also be live on Facebook. Same Wednesday evening encounter, every Wednesday from 6 p.m., we want to encourage all of us to come and if you can't be able to join physically, kindly join and worship in our, because we'll be live on Facebook. Yes, our football team continues, and we are grateful to the Lord. On Sunday, they had a draw with the Korea FC, and today they are traveling to Nairobi Parklands, where they are going to pray City Park. We are welcomed to go and cheer them on. The ladies Wednesday fellowship will be at Margaret Waboy Jogona's home in Banana. That is Bethel cell group at 1 p.m. What to our mama ladies, let us kindly join. As you know, our schools are crossed and we are welcoming our children for VBS, that is vocational Bible study. Kindly release our children to be here from 23rd to 26th of April. There will be cell group Sunday school competition. Let me tell you, brethren, it is beautiful. The kind of talents that our children have can never be discovered if we never allow them to mingle. And this one time they are doing through competitions. Release your children. The competitions will be between cell groups. You can imagine if your cell group will have no one and we have children. This is one way of reaching out to our children. Don't see the competition. See the reaching out to our children. Kindly bring our children so that together they may continue to learn the word of God, to sing beautiful hymnals, to sing and to do memory verses. It is for the good of our children and the good of our families. The Sunday School Sunday will be on the 28th of April. Cathedral merchandise are still on sale. Kindly remember that we have a cathedral 24 hours prayer line and we are free to call and share our prayers with the priests and those who are online. Today is the cell group Sunday, so kindly, after the service, join the team. Monthly fellowship for Belea cell group will be held today on the, at 2 p.m at George Moy's residence in Duberry. Kindly let us join. We want to remind us that there shall be a caregiver's empowerment program. Do we take care of the people at home who are sick, who are needy, who are suffering? On Saturday, Beginning at 9 a.m. here, we shall have a caregiver's empowerment program. Kindly, if you have this kind of people in our areas, 
let us encourage them. It is not a denominational event. Let us encourage our people who are with us to come and we empower them. The wedding bells are ringing. And every day, closer to the wedding day, they are ringing louder. Our brother, the Reverend Mago, the Reverend Michael Mago, shall wed Sarah Wanjiko Nganga on 27th of April, the very last Saturday of this month. We shall all gather at St. Paul's, Kiambu, where the two shall become one kindly purpose to attend. On Sunday, we requested all of us to come with a kilo, just a kilo of rice, or a kilo for men, yes, the ladies, were to come with a kilo of rice. And for gents, we are coming with a kilo of meat. For the young ones, we are coming with a bottle of water because we shall join and make merry. I want to welcome uh, Duguyetu people to lead us in that in the next three minutes. Karibu people. As you are told, today is a big day for Reverend Mago. Yes, we are going to support him with a kilo of rice, a kilo of meat, a kilo of cooking fat. Thank you so much and God bless you so much as you are coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, thank you for your great support. Thank you. And you are all welcome on 27. 27. You are all welcome yes. on that day. Thank you, thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. You can also get at his uh, number 0719 761569. You can put it on the screen, Sami. 0719 It will give you his name, Michael Mago. 0719 Thank you so much. Thank you so much, church. God bless you. Let's appreciate ourselves. Thank you. Now you have given some food for the wedding. Remember, it is imperative that you are tired to eat the food. Because you can't give the food and then fail to attend the wedding. We want to thank you all. May the Lord bless you. We want to remind you that we continue to build the house of the Lord. May I remind us that gold 
and silver belongs to God. And therefore, on the 12th next month, we are coming together, and all of us as guests of honor for the Lord. For the Lord, who enables you to have the gold and the silver. Remember, you came with nothing. And you are putting a lot of effort, including me, and we shall go with nothing because it belongs to God. So let us purpose on the 12th of May to come in the presence of the Lord and offer to the Lord what he has given us. Let us reach out to our friends, all those people who have always invited us to assist them whenever they are having their programs in their churches and other places. You can get your ICAD free from my office. Just need, you just need to tell or to give your name to the leader of your cell group or to any church elder who is here or even to pop in into my office or even to engage me in my WhatsApp or in my email and you shall get your e-card to be able to reach out to friends and other people. Today, we are blessed as we continue with the family conversations. And today, we have one of our own, Dr. Jane, who is going to share with us and to walk with us as we continue to mend and make our families to take and to be stronger praises and better praises where we shall enjoy life in fullness. Remember that the family is where love knows no bounds and support is, limit is limitless. So therefore, brethren, we have to make our praises, our homes, as the best praises to be. So you came prepared to worship the Lord with your tithe, with your thanksgiving, and even with the blocks and bricks to support the building, we invite you to come at the presence of the Almighty as we are read into prayer and then a hymnal to hear and to be taught. Karibuni. Almighty and our living Father, we worship your name on behalf of your servants who have come to your altar, O God. Believing and trusting and obeying your word, heavenly King of all glory, as they bring the 10% proceeds, O God, mighty heavenly Father, from their workplaces, from their businesses, from their investment areas, O God. We pray, heavenly Father, according to thy word, O heavenly Father, that it shall open up the windows, Lord God Almighty that he may pour unto much your blessings in their lives, O Heavenly Father. You who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above, all we can desire of ever think, Lord God Almighty, according to the power that worketh in us. Lord, may your blessings be their portions as they go out and come in, O God. May thy protection, Lord God Almighty, be their portion, O Heavenly Father. Continue to increase them, Heavenly Father, in their businesses, in their workplaces, in their areas of investment, or to the glory and honor of your holy name. And for you are able to do it, my Father, according to the riches in glory, 
Lord, let your blessings now be follow your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we give thanks. Amen. church so it's yet another day that the Lord has made for us to come gather here and also hear about the families for those who do not know me I am Dr. Jane Jago Wajao and I do love the Lord as my Savior and I feel very honored this morning uh, to be given this opportunity by the provost and his team to come and share with you the much that I know about families. So I hope we are going to listen and I hope we are going to put into practice what you hear me talk about. And also, I also tell people that you are free to pick what you feel is building you. But if you feel that there's something that is still not yet building you, the choice is still yours. People are not forced to uh, take ideas that they do not believe with are uh, in. So thank you so much. So we are going to look at the families and I'm going to look at the many challenges that actually families are confronted with. And some of these are uh, uh, conflicts we are going to talk about or the challenges. One of them is destructive conflicts. We also have issues of infidelity. We also have divorced parents also fighting after the divorce has occurred and that is hurting the children. We also have the addictions in those families and also the physical and emotional distance that occurs in families. So this morning, I want to start with this a couple destructive conflicts. And I'm going to borrow very heavily from a marriage therapist by the name Dr. Sue Johnson, who talked about these family conflicts and he called them the demon fights. The demon fights. Couple demon fights. We are not saying that it's the demons that have come to these homes. It is those fights. 
it is those destructive patterns that she referred to as the couple demonic dances. And we are going to see how they look like because I'm sure each one of us have encountered, have participated in these demonic dances because sometimes even the people who are born again, all these things, they are still human beings and you never beat yourself up. You are just human and human beings make mistakes. So one of these dances, and get it very clear, it is called the bad guy boogie, the bad guy, that in these fights we are looking who is the bad one. Who is the bad one in this marriage? Who are we going to blame? So the couples, they spend a lot of time now looking for the bad guy. So we are saying this is a full battle mode where both partners have missiles just to regain a sense of control. So people are ready for a fight. They are in a fight mode. They have all their tyrannies and the weapons, and now they want to see who is going to win this fight. So both the partners at this moment feel rejected and they also want to hear that it's not me, it is the other person. So when we look at the emotional aspect, the emotional music here is hostile criticism. You always, you never, you always think about yourself. So both the partners, you know, now they are trying to look for the winner. Who is the one who started this war? So we are saying, even if this may help one person win, and win in quotes, because there's no winning there, battle, you will be left feeling very bad. So they are looking for the winner. And even if you think you are the winner at that time, we are saying it causes a lot of woods. And who wants to be in a relationship with the bad guy? That is the question. So remember, this blaming game started in the Garden of Eden, where Adam blamed Eve for eating the forbidden fruit. And Eve now also blamed the serpent for uh, bringing, uh, causing the temptations. So we are saying that is something that we have seen. And we want to look at an example. Suppose you went to a friend's house, because we are looking for the bad guy, and you started helping to serve the food. And unfortunately, the dish that was carrying all the delicacies, you know, the meat, the fish, you end up breaking that uh, food pot. Now, instead of you feeling um, a very, um, you really need to feel remorseful for what you have done, you end up now becoming very defensive. And you start saying, but the dish was heavy and she had not told me. That is defensive mood. Uh, the best thing is to become remorseful and think about how you can bring peace because after all, everybody is looking at you with very bad eyes. They feel like knocking you down. After all, how can you uh, drop their fish and meat on the floor, you know? And the party has been ruined. So we are saying, imagine three ways a companion might respond negatively to these remarks. All the your remarks, you are very defensive. Then. Imagine what somebody who is watching and listening would say, you know? And it can get nastier and nastier. Didn't you have, I mean, you don't have eyes. What's wrong with you? You are so reckless, you know? So I want you to start seeing the nature of these demon fights because the same thing occurs in our homes and we need to see the pattern so that we can see when it is beginning and be able to arrest, you know? So we ask ourselves, what would have happened then? Did you get into a loop? Now see if you can remember a similar incident with your spouse, you know? What did you use to win the fight and prove your innocence? How did you accuse your partner, you know? Because now you want, I want you to bring it back home to the marriage, to the couple environment, how they start blaming one another. And what are your causal comebacks when you feel cornered? What do you usually say when now you feel cornered? We are saying, can you sketch out this picture and you see the hostile criticism and the rebelling that happens in, at that particular time? So how did each of you begin to define the other? Because you must start seeing the other one as different. You are now rebelling each other. You are reckless. You are stupid. You never learn, you know? How did each of you wood and enrage the other? 
Was there a winner? That is the question. You may tell yourself there was a winner. Unfortunately, there's no winner. And the two people are very, very wounded. So that is looking for the bad guy. Who is the bad guy? Are we getting it? The bad guy. And I want you to see yourselves in those marriages. Where you have played this game. Because not unless you see it and start working on yourself, that demon dance will continue. So now we go to number two, another demon dance, according to Dr. Sue Johnson, eh? that one of the partner will come and demand, one of the partner will come and attack, one of the partner again will come and criticize. And remember, always when you feel attacked and criticized, you must defend yourself. So this dance is called demand, then hyphen with withdraw. So when the other doesn't respond, we poke and criticize. I want to see you people to see this. And no wonder somebody called them the demonic dances. Because when you feel attacked, first and foremost, you are going to justify and defend yourself. If you don't feel hard, what do you do? You shut it down, isn't it? The silent treatment begins. You know the stone warning begins. So you are now shutting down. You are withdrawing. And we are saying that the other partner is withdrawing or hiding to nab or to cope with their partner's disapproval. So what are we saying? When this happens, instead of that partner keeping quiet, they will poke. You know the way you poke fire, eh? Geshiga. The way you poke, they poke and poke until they make sure that you talk. So the partner will push each other off the brain into loneliness and rejection. Because of that dance again, our people are feeling lonely and the more rejected are by their spouses they are feeling. So no one, soon no one is feeling safe in this relationship. And the dialogue continues and even spins faster and faster. So the dance also goes on forever because the emotions and needs behind the dance are the most, most powerful on this planet. I want at this moment to bring in the aspect of attachment, the way you are connected emotionally. And I want to go back to the childhood times and I will keep forever going back to these childhood times because many things happen or they are made or they go bad at that time. So this attachment is simple. It is as simple as this. The way you see a child crying when the mother is leaving, the way you see a child protesting when it's not being picked or when we are using the phones and ignoring the child, we are saying that when we become adults, we rely on our partners to feel safe, to feel secure, and to feel the warmth. So now it moves from our parents to our spouses. Don't say your partner is behaving childish when they want you to smile, when they want you to really engage with them. And I usually tell the men, because most of them are the culprit, that sometimes they take themselves too seriously. We cannot take ourselves so seriously in a marriage relationship. If we are scientists, let us go to the labs. But in the homes, we must be able to connect emotionally with our partners. Otherwise, the cries you see there are just a protest because you are not really getting attuned to the needs of your partner. So we are saying it goes back to that time, you know? So attachment relationships are the only ties on the earth where any response is better than none. So the couples will keep fighting because as far as attachment is concerned, any response, whether it is fighting, whether it is killing one another, it is better than no response at all. So even if you keep quiet, your partner will keep following, will keep running after you, and you are asking what's wrong with you, because they also want that attachment, and even for you, you also want their attachment. And look at it this way, one of the partners trying to pursue the other, but with the wrong method, because they attacked and they demanded, isn't it? That is the problem, otherwise there's nothing wrong. So it is like now, this partner is trying to cross you out of the door, and you are holding firmly onto this door, and really clinging onto that door because you want it open. I want you to see how desperately we need each other in these relationships that sometimes we take for granted. So we go now to the third dance, freeze and free dance. So this one is now the worst, because each one of you has become tired. 
Each one of us has become helpless. So what do they do? We all withdraw uh, psychologically. We, we withdraw emotionally. And that emotional disconnect now. Dance terms. Suddenly there's no one in the dance floor. Imewacho watupu. Everybody has run different direction. Help us cater because you won't preserve yourself. So in this freeze and free dance, because we are saying it's the most dangerous, you may think that all is well because they are not fighting. However, this is where you find people sleeping in the different bedrooms. You also see people sleeping on one bed, but there are boundaries. Dare you touch me? You know, dare you touch me? There are already boundaries there. And I hope you people are getting it. The boundaries are there. They are not even being said, but they are there. And then one is sleeping, uh, I mean, one is facing east, the other one is facing west all the time. And if it were also possible, one's head would be facing north, and the other partner's head would be facing south. That is how bad it has now become. Yes? Because we are all preserving ourselves. So we are saying in terms, both the partners turn or withdraw, taking their respective attentions away from their partners. Yeah? The emotional dance. Partners lose hope and turn away to nurse their own woods. Yeah? So the deeper core message is, I am hurt and I am afraid, you know? And there is some, sometimes very little actual fighting in this relationship where this kind of pattern is showing up, but that does not mean the relationship is healthy at all. So the boundaries are there. May God help us to remove these boundaries as we move on. So what is the way forward concerning these demon dances? Let us look at the first one, the bad guy. So can, is it possible for us to go back and talk about the fights and console one another. Yeah? Let us not prolong issues like that rope we talk about, you know, Mokwawa go. Let us not prolong. What time, what energy do we have even? If we love ourselves, let us look for this peace. Brethren, if we love ourselves, let us try to solve the issues as they come up. So ask yourself these questions. What happened after you fight the bad guy fight? Yeah, how did you feel about yourself, your partner, and the connection between you? Remember, the connection is now gone. You are like two strangers, and you are saying, I don't even understand who I got married to. Because even if you try to protest they are watching too much TV, they will not care. In fact, they will pick a fight from there. You know? They will pick a fight because, again, they will feel attacked. So these are the things. So were you able to go back and talk about the fight and console each other? Meaning you go back and try to go and see what happened in a better, I mean, when you are very peaceful so that you can see how you can resolve the conflict. So what do you think might have happened if you had said, we are starting to label each other, you know? We are starting to call each other stupid. We are starting to call each other reckless to prove the other one that he's the bad or she's the bad one. We are just going to hurt, you know? We are just going to hurt one more if we get stuck in this dance. So you are getting into a discussion. We realize, I realize now we are getting into this bad process, you know? And then you tell the person, we are now looking for the bad person. And you tell them, we are just hurting each other and we are not helping uh, things at all. So we are just going to get hurt more if we get stuck in this dance because you love yourself. You don't want to prolong the time that you are hurt in this relationship. So let's not get caught in an attack, attack dance with each other. This attack, attack will never help anybody and it will not help the relationships. Maybe we can talk about what happened without it being anyone's fault. You can talk about it, but don't say it is you. And then the other one is saying you are the one who started. Come on, can't you remember you are the one who began? So that one is a waste of time. The minute you realize you are getting there, kindly use your wisdom. And we are called upon to be wise like the serpent sometimes, you know? 
nyamweaze so that at least we can be able to deal with some of these things. So we are saying you need to see that issue. So create secure attachment, the one that I've been talking about. That we, if the child uh, requires the parents to nurture them, to soothe them, and to protect them. This is exactly the same things we are all looking from our partners. To nurture us, to soothe us, and to protect us. And let no man here say they do not know how to soothe women. When they come and they are being asked, why are you so emotionally distant? Because that is when we talk about loneliness in a relationship. That you are seeing two people there, but they are so lonely. And then we hear some men, most of them, are not able to connect emotionally. And I simply ask them one question. Do you have a child? Yes, I have a child. Now, how do you show the child that you love him or her? Yes, they are very quick. Yes, I soothe the baby. Yes, I smile at the baby. Sometimes I take the baby and run. I will run. I run after the baby. We play games. Kwani, what else are you waiting for? That is the game you need to be playing with your spouses. That is the game. Nothing here that is foreign. It is as simple as that. Whatever you do to soothe your child, do it to your partner. And even the ladies, there are some who are also stone-faced and they don't understand the language. Kaidre, the way they nurture the child, let them nurture their men and things will be better and I'm, I'm sure things will be different for them. So that attachment is very, very important. So there are three main uh, aspects of this attachment that being open and I keep saying this open communication is the one that will set us free. Because you cannot become a mind reader. You must tell, you cannot assume your spouse is a mind reader. You must tell them, when you do this, I feel this, and this happens. Because if you can't say that and you are just there looking very groomy, who will know what they have done to you? You will need to be very open all the time. If it is the woman who has changed, if it is the man who has changed since the marriage, let it be said openly and be brought on the table, but not with the criticism. If it is the woman who, was, who used to be very smart, and now she no longer cares, she's so reckless, and does not even do any personal care, let, it, let the man say it, but in a kind manner. Is it the baby that has been brought between the man and the wife in the bed and making the boundary intentionally? Let it be brought to table. Let it be discussed. Is it that the relatives are too many in this home and the man or the woman of the house is feeling very lonely, feeling alone, le feeling left out with no space? Let it be brought to the table. Let people discuss because that is what will save these marriages. You cannot keep quiet, just talk about it, but in a calm and respectable manner. So we need to remain attuned to one another as couples. Attuned. The way you know Kameme FM is 98.7 or 98, and you know when you put it on there, you will get that one. Also, remain attuned to your spouse, meaning you are not listening to other things as the conversations are going on. You must show that you are listening and you really, uh, uh, you, need, you really need to hear what they are saying. We also need to be responsive to one another. Responsive. That when somebody is coming and talking about stressful work environment, how are we responding? Are we dismissing them? Or are we just ignoring? It's as if they have not said something. All these spouses, we are all like children, and we are asking, are you there? Are you there with me? Are you following me? Do you respect me? And do you really value me in all that you do? Those are the questions. Can I count on you? Can I depend on you? Are you there for me? Will you respond to me when I need to? When I call, will you respond to me? Do I matter to you? Am I valued to you? Am I accepted by you? Do you need me or can you rely on me? Those are the questions that each one of these partners is asking. So the anger and the criticism, the demands, are really cries to their spouses, calls to stir their hearts, to draw their mates back emotionally and reestablish a sense of self, connection 
So even when you see the people criticizing, attacking one another, they are simply cries so that you can re reconnect emotionally because that attachment is the central thing in that marriage relationship. So how then can you establish that, uh, how, that emotional connection? I am calling upon people to look at ways in, in means they can really enhance that emotional bank account. Because we talk about banks, and we just think banks are just there for money, for us to deposit money and to withdraw. However, somebody by the name John Gottman has told us that we need to deposit in our spouse's emotional bank account. Is that making sense? It is not just about money where we are banking. When we bank money, we know we can withdraw during tough times. Again, and similarly, during tough times, when they're ups and down in a marriage, you can always be able to withdraw what you had banked emotionally. So what, because you'll be remembering the good moments and then you'll be more attached to your spouse. So how then are we creating this emotional bank account? One, you can pray together, you can eat the breakfast together, you can travel together. And remember traveling, I talk about couple times and family times. Don't always carry your children such that even your partner cannot be intimate with you even in those hotels. No way. There is family time and couple time. And it gets me clear, please, brethren, because we need to have couple times. And the ones who are not taking their spouses out, it doesn't have to be expensive. Just go there on Kiaburo and take a cup of soup and go home. What we need is the quality time together, isn't it? It doesn't have to cost millions or even thousands. However, we need to be very committed to, uh, to these partners in these relationships, you know? Then compliment your partner. Always tell them what you like about them. I appreciate you so much for paying school fees on time. Don't think it is a must, it's a duty for them. There are those who are not paying. Is it making sense? There are many who are not paying the school fees kindly. So appreciate them when they do something good. And the women also to be appreciated for what they are doing well. That makes a difference. We are just like the children where you motivate them more when they do well in school, you give them something. That is token economy. It makes them do better next time. So even a couple, a spouse who feels appreciated, we are also, also really reciprocate and we will be happy in those, uh, in those times when the things are not going well, you can always be able to withdraw from there. So you can even go to the bathroom together. Why wouldn't you go to the bathroom? Have you stolen anybody's man or woman? You go to the bathroom and share and clean each other, isn't it? Yes, it is not foreign, it is possible. Don't you think because marriages are adding, it's not all the marriages that are adding. There are couples that are, uh, people can emulate from. So really, you must do those things because you will be investing in your spouse's emotional bank account. Join your partner when they are doing uh, their housework. You can as well as a man go in and cook with his wife. You can do things together and remember that is connecting you emotionally. So the other main challenge that we are getting in these marriages is the case of divorce, you know, because of infidelity. Infidelity is one of the leading cause. And we are saying that here there's a lot of distrust. People cannot trust one another. The commitment to this marriage is also going. And we are saying around one fourth of all marriages face infidelity. And one of the biggest threats uh, and it's one of the biggest threats to marriages and families. So we need now to remain very committed to these uh, relationships because we said until death do us part, unless we are getting killed in those relationships, always let us try to work on things before we give up. And I'm not saying that all marriages can be salvaged. Get me very clear. Some will not be salvaged. I've also seen them adding in my own room, in my own office. I have tried and tried and tell the person, uh, you know you need to tell the person uh, what to expect. You tell them about some loneliness which may come, and they tell you, Madam Counselor, that loneliness began 10 years ago, um, there's nothing I'm going to lose, you know? So some of these things, already when the people are coming, it is already too late. 
but always remember, grass seems to be greener on the other side of the fence. There are those who have left their marriages and they could have worked on them, it was not that bad. And they say, it is like I'm jumping from the frying pan into the fire. Alas, it is too late because they have moved on and the second one is not working. We were told by Dr. last week that these second marriages, even half of them end up getting, uh, ending because if you have not worked on yourself, don't think you are going to have a better marriage even as you start another one. So then we need to have the solution that we need to become assertive communicators where we are openly communicating about things as they are happening to us. So it is always good that we encourage that communication and we try to understand one another. So for the sake of time, I'm going to bring in one about the addictions, which is very, very, also very common that we need also to remember about the addictions and these ones are about alcohol and drugs. Others, it's about shopping. There are people who will go and shop and shop and buy like even 20 pairs of shoes as if they can wear three at any given time. They are sick. Don't laugh at them. They have something they lacked when they were children and now they are trying to compensate all these addictions as a result of things. Then the alcohol, the internet, which has now killed many, many marriages because people are just in a world of their own. Their children have been left. And if you ever see your child coming to retouch your face trying to bring your mouth next to her, just know that the child is feeling ignored, that the child is feeling lonely, that the child is feeling very uh, not attended by any parent. So they are actually crying inside because of this internet. How would it look like for us to have uh, internet, a uh, free moment, yeah? Social media detox also in our homes because we are killing the relationships. We are killing the relationship with our spouses. We are killing the relationship with our children. So the people who are addicted, I want to remind you that they feel very empty inside. So they have, they, most of them were abused as children. And remember, it is very shocking that sometimes people will keep quiet and, about their abuse until they are even 40 years old, until they are 50 years old. Why? Because they can't trust you as, you are, as the parent. They fear you are going to condemn them. They fear you are going to blame them. So they kept it quiet. And these woods become so bad in adult life until it is really crippling their lives. So we really need to be very careful about how we are also uh, letting our children talk with us. Because if we are not open with them, they are also going to get hurt in the process and things may happen to them and we may never know. So there's now a new song that we need to sing about these uh, addicted people. Instead of asking, why don't they stop using the needle? Why don't they stop using the alcohol? We need to ask, how did the needle end up here? How did the bottle end up in this person? What is this that went wrong and what can I do to help? And I think the church is doing very well because when they take the addicts, they are really working with them and showing them love because that is what they need. We are saying we cannot now run away from the addicts because they are members of the family. Each one of us is craving for that connection, isn't it? Even the addict is craving for connection. However, we, it is very hard to love the addicts for sure. And when they come home, we tell them, if you don't sign up, don't even call me again. If you don't sign up, don't even come here, you know? So already we are killing that connection. So somebody has found another approach and he said, he's called Johan Hardy, that we need to show them a lot of love. Because when we do that, we are deepening our connection with them instead of the emotional disconnect. So he suggested we tell them these words, I love you. I love you whether you are using it or not. I love you whatever state you are in. And if you ever need somebody to listen to you, I am available because I love you and I do not want you to be alone. So call me anytime. So I love you and I don't care what, how, much, how much alcohol or drugs you have used, you know. 
and you are saying if you ever want somebody to talk to, kindly reach out to me. I'll be ready to hear because I love you and I do not want you to feel alone, you know? So the core message is you are not alone. We love you. And, and this is what now we have to, to continue talking about out there. So for hundreds of years, we have been singing war songs to add it. We have been singing war songs to add it. We should have been singing love songs to them. It sounds crazy, but this is what we need to do because they want to feel loved. They want to feel needed. They want to feel safe. They also want to feel secure, just like us in the marriage situation, just like a child with a parent. So the same people, even if they are grown-ups, they are yearning to feel safe to feel secure, and that is why we have to start singing a new song to them. Because that is the song that will help us, and the more we connect with them, the more they are likely to come back to us, you know? So we also have the rebellious children in homes, and we need to ask ourselves, why are they rebelling? It said that we are also too much and too strict with them, you know? The rebellious child. And somebody by this John, uh, there's this some person who has written a book, what's wrong with this child? If you read from that book, you will hear that some children will also misbehave in school to get your attention. Why are they doing that? Because you never show them attention. The children can also become rebellious because as you are fighting, you have also ignored them, isn't it? They are feeling ignored. So there are those children who will fall ill. And you know they will tell themselves they are ill until they fall ill. When they fall ill, they notice very well that the fights stop. You know, the fights stop because they now are getting, I mean, at least they are getting attention from you and the fights are going to stop. So they can become even sick so that you can stop what you are doing in these families. Is it getting clear? Yeah, so we need to understand why is this child rebelling? What can I do to arrest this? And remember, open communication always is there. A rebellious children are, can test our patience, you know? And we are saying sometimes it gets very tricky until we are even going to look for help for them, even with the cancerous. But let us ask ourselves, what is this that we can do better? Can we connect with them emotionally? Can we have open communication with them because that is what will help us at the end of the day. So we are saying that these challenges may actually look very, very overwhelming, and they are many, and they are common. They are not a respect of marriages and homes. And we are saying with knowledge, like the one we are getting here, with the patience with one another, and with a lot of dedication and willingness to take in the solutions and start em employing them, such problems can be worked through. So there is hope, brethren, that these marriages can be salvaged. These homes, the connections can be, they can be regained, even between a mother and a child, between a father and a child. It is never too late. Let us strive so that we do not regret that we lost also our children as we were busy doing other things. So remember to always commit your family before the Lord. And we are going to end there. May God bless you. sincerely want to thank the Lord for allowing us to hear what he wanted us to hear this morning. What went on on where me Peter, Sindio? To one of the Nyumbani, Sindio Kweli. And I love the ending, there is hope. There could be challenges in our homes, but there is hope. It is possible and we thank the Lord for you, Jane, for allowing the Lord to use you. We continue with this conversation coming Sunday. Make sure I'm not ending the service. You come with a friend as you continue to learn. It's time to give. And God, remember, he loves a cheerful giver. Now we will welcome the choir and the praise team to lead us in a hymn as joyfully we bring our offering to the Lord.